All right, welcome uh, everyone uh, to Board and Dice Con 2022. Um, and a very special welcome to two guests that I have with me. We have Thomas from Board Game Revolution, Hello. as well as Theo, Hello. who's currently experiencing <laughs> some, uh, some right, at, right at the last second, y'all, right at the last second. <laughs> But uh, oh, but yeah. Theo is here still. So uh, how are you um, guys? Great. Thanks for having great. me. Great. Yes. Thank you so much for inviting me to this fun event. Yeah. And a very uh, warm welcome to everyone who's joining us um, in the chat and who's watching this live. Uh, we are uh, streaming simultaneously to both uh, Facebook and on Twitch. Um, and um, I'm monitoring the chat for both of those. Hello to Jochen and to Casey and Katya and Marios and others that are watching. Uh, thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, now, I don't know if um, how many of you who are watching it uh, live, if you watched the last one that we did. So last year uh, in April, we did our first uh, Board and Dice Con. Um, and you will you will recognize the format basically where we will have a lot of we have a lot of special events and things uh planned for you and fun guests as is evident just from uh from this stream right here um we're going to talk in a minute uh about some of the things that we have planned for you but first i just want to talk to our illustrious guests and and see how how you guys have been what's what's going on with you guys um tell everyone a little bit about yourselves and where they can find you and what you're up to these days uh thomas do you want to go first definitely not <laughs> <laughs> deal can go I will gladly take the front if you want me to do that one. That's fine. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Hi, I'm Theo. Uh, I run the YouTube and social media for Geeky Gamer Guy, which uh, is all about board games, and that's like what I love. So that's uh, G A Y M E R. I know people love to say it's Gay Mer Guy, but it's actually Gamer Guy. <laughs> I I'm not a fish or have a fish. I I'm a gamer. So, um, but I basically have been doing a lot of previews and all that sort of stuff on my YouTube channels. I'm actually focusing on trying to move more to, towards how to play. So I just want to do my own spin on doing how to plays for that. So that's, that's what's up with me on, on the channel stuff. Nice to meet you, by the way. Thank you. Nice to meet you, I don't think we formally met before, yeah. No. But for those that don't know me, I, uh started board game revolution about five years ago i think now uh facebook community group and we've grown across social media on other platforms i'm community manager now semi full-time do marketing for a lot of crowdfunding and retail releases we help publishers best we can like board and dice even back when they were nskn games um we go know. way back way back yeah so I've started doing a little bit of content too, working on something. Hopefully it's a little unique. It's kind of in between how to plays and previews. So stay tuned for more of those as I kind of work out the bugs. It's a little a little rough for me. I'm not a big fan of being on camera. I don't really mind talking, but I just get distracted. My ADHD, you know. <laughs> fair, fair. That's like fair. I said, I got a face for radio, so we'll, 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 that's where I should have no. stuck. But <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you having of... me, Rainier. Uh, speaking of content and such, uh, both of you did content for us recently for uh, during the La Granja Deluxe Master Set a Kickstarter oh. that we did. Um, so that was that was excellent. Um, mm -hmm. So excited about um, about that one coming out. Of love course. that game. It's yeah, so, that's a good I one. I love that, that game yeah. so much. I love it. Y'all have done such a great job with it. It's like finally the production meets the amazingness of the game like it's just a great game and y'all did such a great job with it well thank you yeah we're we're happy with it i mean it was it was a great success with the kickstarter and we're super excited about um now getting things in motion to actually get it produced and out to to backers and so forth so uh, so it's yeah. Uh, yeah, that's definitely exciting, um, and it, it's been exciting too to see the response from the community. Not just people that were backing it, but uh, everyone that that had 
an, a chance to experience it, right? Whether that was from just observing the campaign or or the excitement uh, during different live events or from from various media and content creators, it was it was great. So uh, we're very yeah. happy about that. Um, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So the question is, um, where do we go from there? I mean, we're right on the tail end of something as exo it's as exciting as uh, that deluxe master set campaign. And what can we possibly have that will be just as exciting? Well, the I answer, mean, I think, is this weekend, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. This Very weekend. Exciting. I think there's some good stuff in the in the works that's coming in this way yeah so we have uh, leading up to um leading up to this weekend we've talked about uh if you follow us on social media which you should um we've talked about some of the guests that we will have some of the different events and so forth and we have a packed schedule we're basically doing between the two days we're doing about 24 hours of of streaming different events <laughs> And uh, yeah, so we have lots of lots of fun things to uh, to offer and uh, provide and so forth. So let me um, let me stop teasing and and just tell everyone a little bit uh, in detail about some of the things that are going on. So uh, the first thing that I want to talk about is the event schedule for uh, for basically the streaming. So. Uh, as you can see here, we have uh, today is Saturday, February 19th, and at 9 a.m., welcome to Board and Dice Con 2022. Well, that's this. Congratulations. You are watching the first uh, event that we have going on. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, you're going to see uh, there's, there's a, a running theme here, uh, which uh, is basically nightmares and horrors and related uh, artwork uh, starting at 10 30 so in uh, just uh, under an hour and a half in about an hour and 15 minutes we're going to have uh, a discussion about uh, Zdzisław Bekszynski uh, he's he was a uh, Polish uh, painter and a lot of his a lot of his artwork uh, and his paintings they often depicted very grim um, very grim scenes things that people often describes as scenes from nightmares and uh the subtitle of that particular uh event is when art becomes a board game because uh we will have uh in just over a month there will be a, a crowdfunding campaign for nightmare cathedral which is um a licensed uh project that uses uh, a lot of the artwork from Zizor Bekszynski uh, so we will talk about that. We mm -hmm. have a special guest from the Historical Museum in Sanok, who is uh, that museum is basically the caretaker and has the permanent gallery for his for his artwork. Um, so I, I don't know if if you Theo and, and Thomas, if you're familiar with his uh, with his artwork and such, you, you you would probably recognize the art, especially as we go through uh, and look at some of the the artwork later in this presentation. Um, but I don't know if you're familiar with, with him by name or, or so. It sounds familiar. It's, it's very Geiger-esque in ways. I think I've seen a couple of his images actually. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds familiar. The flute familiar. guy. I remember the flute guy. I'm looking that up right now. Yep. Very creepy. Oh, yeah. Using yeah, the so internet while we're here. That's a great idea. <laughs> right. <laughs> Walter Kaskin. That's so, a great idea. Good job, Thomas. <laughs> So, so that's um, th there will be several different uh, discussions and panels, and we were going to be showing the artwork and so forth. Um, but, but this is the first one. I, I encourage you to tune into this one. Uh, this will basically talk. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the process of turning that uh, beautiful artwork um, into a board game. And like I said, we'll have a special guest from uh, from the museum as well. Um, after that event, uh, we will have a Meet the Board and Dice team uh, event. We did this last time as well. Um, part of it is that we've had some changes uh, to the team. We've had, we have some new team members uh, that were not with us last time. Uh, but also it's nice to, to have a chance to just tell everyone um, a little bit about basically the process of 
Um, how does it work? What like what what does a board game publisher do? What do the different departments do? Uh, and we're gonna go over that basically in the order in which a board game is being made. Uh, so we're gonna t uh, talk to to all the different uh, people that are involved in bringing uh, a game from the early stages of development until it reaches uh, your gaming table. So that's uh, that's really exciting as well. Super cool. Um, after that, we are going to have a Creative Minds, uh, the first of several Creative Minds uh, events. Creative Minds is basically where we um, talk to or, or the, a, a guest who is uh, talking about some creative aspect about uh, what they do. In this case, it's going to be Philip Gorch, who is uh, a designer as well as um, our head of marketing for Board and Dice. Uh, Philip has been uh, designing uh, several of actually of, of our more recent titles. He is the designer of uh, Mandala Stones as well as uh, Founders of Teotihuacan, which is a game that is coming out in just over uh, a month. So we're going to talk to him, or rather he will talk to us about uh, some of the design process in the making of uh, Founders of Teotihuacan. Um, at 2 p.m., uh, today we will have uh, a fun quiz. Uh, we, we're not not everything is directly related to games uh, that we make or so. It's the, these uh, this convention is just as much about having fun. There will be uh, something uh, hosted by the Brothers Murph. This quiz is broken. If you're not familiar with that, they've hosted this sometimes on their uh, channel, where basically there is all sorts of board game trivia. It could be uh, how tall what's taller a stack of something or something else right they are all sorts of random uh, unnecessary knowledge uh, trivia but but it's a lot of fun uh, so looking forward to that uh, after that at 3 30 today and I should mention by the way all of these times are in mountain uh, standard time so um, keep that in mind um, after that, we have a geeky panel, and we will get to see Theo and Thomas then again. Uh, name that component. Um, it will be time to rub the brain cells together and see. It, it, it's it's so funny when you see when you see a photo of a game or sometimes a component. You know that that's. You, I mean, you recognize the component, but do you know which game it goes with? That's the question, and we will see how how well we do then. <laughs> we will find out if I can. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but it will be fun, and um, you can you can participate during that event as well and see if you recognize uh, some of those those things. So looking forward to that. Then at uh, four thirty, we have uh, some guests from uh, our family place games. So Mick and Starla from OFPG are going to join us. We're going to be talking about the Board and Dice Ally program, as well as OFPG Voices. Uh, of course, this is something that um, is close to both our heart and the heart of our family plays games when it comes to diversity and inclusion and being inviting of everyone and making sure that everyone has both a space and a voice to, uh, to enjoy uh, this hobby. So we're going to talk about that uh, with them as well. So highly encourage you to tune in for that. And then we are uh, closing out the day with a live play of Nightmare Cathedral. Again, Nightmare Cathedral is the game that is based on and is using uh, the artwork of Stisław Bekszynski. Um, so that is a, a fairly packed schedule. And this is just day one. Oof. We got a lot to go through, y'all. It's going to be fun. Yeah. I want to play Nightmare Cathedral. Yeah. <laughs> we, we can make that happen. Yeah. That looks really up my alley for sure. Here for it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so let's see what we have going on tomorrow. And and there will be uh, I will do a quick summary tomorrow morning, uh, to just remind everyone of uh, the schedule that is going on. Uh we start at the same time, so nine AM mountain time. Um where there will be again a quick little welcome and just going over the schedule of the day. Uh, we have another Creative Minds where we're going to be talking to Shershov Baran, who is a photographer, and he will be talking to us about not only 
the work that he does with taking board game photos, uh, but also some of the things that goes into that because board game photography is different from other types of photography. And especially if this is something that uh, interests you, uh, tune in for that because he's going to give some tips and, and tricks to how you can improve uh, in that regard as well. Um, then there will be at 10.30 a live play of Founders of Teotihuacan. Uh, mm -hmm. This is, to my knowledge, the first uh, first live play of a final production uh, copy of the game. Uh, so the Brothers Smurf are going to be uh, streaming that. So we're looking forward to, to seeing that. Um, then we have um, an event that, it, that we're calling Board Games Across the World. Uh, our head of sales, uh, Ira Kuska, is going to um, have a lot of guests on from basically uh, localization partners that we have globally. So we only publish games in English, but we have partners all over the world for uh, various uh, Asian markets, for different language editions there, for different markets in Europe, whether that be in Germany or France or the Nordic countries and in Latin America and so forth. So. Uh, several of these localization partners are going to be uh, joining for that event and just talking about uh, both some of that, the process um, of, of what goes into localizing a game into another language and also some of the challenges uh, that that brings. Um, after that, at 1 p.m. tomorrow, we have a designer dialogue uh, with both Adam Kopinski and David Turtsey. Uh, Adam Kopinski uh, is, of course, a designer of many games, some of which are published by us. Uh, but he's the designed games like Lords of Hellas and Nemesis. And for us, he's a designer of, for example, uh, Dark Ages, as well as Origins First Builders, which is a game mm -hmm. that came out uh, last year. Uh, mm -hmm. As well as David Turtsey, who works for us both on uh, game development as well as uh, the solo modes of basically all the games that we we publish uh, with very few exceptions uh, so we're going to talk to them and and see and of course david turtsey has also uh, designed uh, several standalone games uh, for us including tawantan suyu as well as being the co-designer of tekhenu uh, then we have another um panel where we are talking about Bikshinsky's artwork. Um, one thing that is interesting is um, that Bikshinsky, w when he created his paintings, basically, he would never give a name to the paintings and he would never talk about what inspired him or so. He wanted people to basically either just enjoy the artwork for, for what it was or to have their own, um, feel their own inspiration or so forth. Um, which which makes sense when you think about it, right? Um, he felt that by giving a name to um, to his paintings, then that would taint people in starting to thinking about, okay, well, what what's the meaning of that? Because he did not always ascribe meaning to his own paintings; he just painted what he what he wanted to uh, to paint. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're gonna look at some of those some of that artwork and and see what inspirations that we draw from it, or maybe we feel. We, we recollect nightmares instead. Uh, depends on the images, I guess, but we will we'll take a look at that. Mm -hmm. And then we have another Creative Minds um, event with Boise Kubatsky, who is the designer of Nightmare Cathedral, as well as our uh, head of development. But he will be spending this event to talk to us about uh, the design process of uh, designing and creating Nightmare Cathedral and some of the where he drew inspiration from the different artwork and so forth in bringing that to life in a board game. Uh, then we have another uh, panel discussion, this time about representation in board games. Very excited about that and especially with the guests that we have lined up for that. We have Matthew McCack as well as Stella from Ipomo University and Benita Kay. Uh, who will be joining for that. Uh, really excited about talking about representation in board games. Again, this is uh, another important topic. Uh, we, we like talking about both uh, diversity and inclusion and representation in board games. These are important topics for us, and we highly encourage you to tune in for those things. And then we are rounding out tomorrow, as well as the convention, with a live play of Terracotta Army, where uh, David from Man vs. Meeple, as well as, um, oh, I just blanked, um, Marty from Rolling Dice and Taking Names will be joining for that. So that's, um, nice. yeah, I think that's a pretty good 
pretty good lineups. So that's a, for that's a great spread. I mean, that sounds like a great couple days. Anything in particular that, that stood out to you that you're excited about? Nightmare Alley. Yeah, that one's <laughs> great. And I mean, really, I'm, I'm, the, I love that y'all, Cathedral for sure. Yeah. I love that y'all like try to, um, uh, that y'all are really doing the inclusive and trying to get more people to have a, di a diverse range and, yeah, that stuff is great, and I I just I love seeing that. So, well, thank you. Yeah, I, I think it's one of those things that, um, I mean, I have certainly spent a fair bit of time on. So, I, so I do weekly streams um, uh, as well, and and from time to time I talk about the process of uh, whether that be diversity and inclusion in in the games that we publish or the process of doing. Uh, cultural consultation for example um like some of the the games and we're going to talk about it in, in a moment here but like uh, terracotta army for example um despite the fact that this is a well documented um world heritage site right um mm -hmm. we wanted to make sure that we talked to people in china people who are who are there and who are experts in this because i love that it's it, it's one of those things that i i I don't see a drawback to it, right? Um, what what can possibly go wrong other than the fact that you, that things are more accurate or that um, you're getting an authentic experience because you're actually talking to somebody who's there. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah, and and especially because we we like to publish games that have to do with uh, historical places and locations, and and there's there's nothing wrong with that, right? I mean, you can you can make mm -hmm. games about. A historical place or or about another culture or so but then you need to put in the work to to do that justice you can't just figure that well i can study about it no you, you need to to take the proper action and and consult yeah. with, uh, with people there's um, only so much you can learn from research when you need to get other people's experiences that live it then you then it, it actually comes through more authentic and i love that that y'all do that y'all yep. put in the legwork for it yeah, and, and I think it's for, for us it has become one of those things that is um, it, it's it's just part of the process right just like we want to have the best artwork that we can have consulting with with people of that culture or, or whatever it might be that's just part of that process again for making sure that it's an authentic um, experience Love it. yeah, that's awesome well, I think uh, based on what I'm seeing in the comments as well, people are, seem to be excited about... Um, actually, people seem to ex be excited about a lot of different things. They're talking about um, both the Ally program, and I'm excited to, to talk more about that uh, in general I, as a summary. Uh, but we'll talk more about that later this, this afternoon. But the Ally program is meant to... Um, even though it's open for everyone, the primary focus is to invite uh, either people of color or uh, people of the LGBTQ plus uh, community uh, who can find a safe space with us to talk about board games. We will have presentations where we will talk about our experiences in board game publishing, in board game development, uh, what what do you need to do to pitch a game to a publisher? How do you prepare prototypes? How do you whatever it might be right how do you find artists to do to do things uh this is what we do uh all the time and we just want to share of that um of that knowledge and and making sure that people who may otherwise not always have those opportunities um will will have that opportunity to to learn from us in whatever uh whatever way we can can share some of that knowledge um, oh, that was wonderful. <laughs> Sign me up. That sounds great. More people. Please. Yeah, and, and, and that's the thing. I, I think I think we, we just in general, we need we need more people to be part of this hobby, right? Um, that it's it's going to get better um, by by having more diversity and more people part of it. Uh, Ronald, uh, thank you so much for following, by the way. Uh, I failed to mention there was someone that followed just before we started as well, which was um, Doug. Um, 
Doug the Meek, thank you so much for, for following as well. Really appreciate it. Um, of course, by following, you'll be getting notifications when we go live and so that you won't uh, miss anything. Um, uh, someone was also asking earlier, by the way, if the audience can participate. Audience, audience will be able to participate in both the quiz is broken that is hosted by the Brothers Murph, as well as in the name that component. Um, I as could well, use so. y'all's help, just yes. so you know. <laughs> <clears throat> I, just need, I could use some help. Proper names. We're not great with proper names here. So. How, how about they can join to compete against you? That's fine. Right. You, can, you know what? Y'all can win. That's fine. Go for it. Just, yeah, get ready. Yeah. <laughs> get ready for that. <laughs> um, Rick, thank you so much uh, for uh, following as well. Um, all right. Well, I'm not going to keep people longer. People were excited as we were talking about some of the the games so let's talk about games uh because yeah. there will be lots of games and such going on now one of the things that i want to uh, to mention for everyone and i'm going to put a link here uh in the chat as well uh if you are uh if you are not already on our discord uh you can join our discord server uh and we will have we have people that will be uh standing by and ready to uh, demo some of these games. There will be demos of both um, Terracotta Army, uh, uh, Zapotec, and uh, Nightmare Cathedral. Where you'll be able to 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 play and demo these games. And otherwise, if you have questions about it, uh, there will, there are people there that are ready to to help explain um, some of those things or or so. But let's talk about these games and let's start with Nightmare Cathedral. And you see a date there in the top uh, left corner, March 28th. March 28th mm -hmm. is uh, the date when this will be uh, going live on uh, crowdfund. Uh, sorry, game fund, game found. And um, you can I also put a link there in the in the in the chat. So on March 28th, uh, a, a game found campaign will be going live there. Uh, you can follow the project uh, already now and you can basically uh, sign up there for notifications and you can see a little bit of a preview of what uh, what this game is about. Now, one of the things that you see, of course, here on uh, on the screen is that there are some both uh, awesome and uh, creepy miniatures uh, that are brought to life. So again, a lot of the uh, the artwork from uh, Bikshinsky will be brought to life uh, both on, on cards and various artwork in the game, but also in the form of uh, miniatures and other uh, 3D elements and, and such. Um, here is a, a preview uh, look of what the... Um, what the game looks like. Um, this Ooh. here is basically the setup for uh, for three players. Uh, as the game goes on, uh, players will be vying for control over different uh, parts of the board, uh, different areas where you have uh, followers that you can summon. Uh, you have a shaper miniature that will be moving around and that can convert uh, other followers or shadows to become your followers. And uh, there will be a, a cathedral that is being built in the middle of uh, of the of the game board. Now, because this is a nightmare cathedral, uh, that means that once the cathedral is built, there will be no good things to happen. Instead, there will be <laughs> nightmares that are coming out and that are uh -oh. roaming around uh, the board. So, uh, the embodiment of uh, nightmares in miniature form will be roaming around the board trying to devour the souls of your followers. Sometimes that's what you want. Uh, sometimes that's not so much what you're after. Um, okay. There are different actions that you uh, that you have. There are basically five different actions that you can play to both advance on a ritual track. You can perform rituals. Uh, there is, again, the ability to, to summon and maneuver your uh, followers around the board. Uh, you have the ability to develop those actions so that they become stronger. And you can also fortify your location so that uh, you're less vulnerable to either the actions of the nightmares or the actions of the other players because this is not a cooperative game. This is very much a competitive uh, game. 
Um, but it's also neat. You have uh, dream cards that are basically objectives that you can fulfill. And there are also there's very neat um, action selection mechanisms where you, even though you have five uh, actions, you can't. You're a little bit restricted to which action you can take after you've performed one of them. Uh, so you can basically not. You have to to perform actions that are not adjacent to the ones that you just performed. However, other people have the ability to either uh, conform or dissent to every action that you are taking as well. Cool. Is that like a rondel in the middle? I can't tell. Yes. So <clears throat> well, so so the spaces that you see in the middle, those are basically the different locations. But if you look on the on the left side, and uh, that's where there are f you see five lighter spaces, and those are yep. the locations where you basically place your uh, your dreamer, and that's where that determines which action. Then after you've taken that action, it gets shifted over to a night space, and next time you cannot take you cannot choose a, a day action that is adjacent to the night space where your dreamer is at. Sounds great. Okay. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. And here's another closer look at what Ooh. the game will look like. So this is basically the uh, the cathedral that is being built. Uh, there are multiple pieces. Uh, so if you're looking on, on this the previous uh, image, you see over on the left side, you see how the, the cathedral is being built uh, from multiple different parts as the game is progressing. And then once the, the cathedral is completely built, that's when the nightmares uh, come out. And that also brings the game uh, closer to uh, to the end as well. And there are a couple of different oh, ways cool. that the game can end, and there are multiple ways that you can score points. One of the primary ways will be through uh, the objectives that you fulfill, uh, but there are also other things that you can do to earn points um, during the game. And, and again, you can either try to fight against the forces of uh, the cathedral and the nightmares and the shadows, or you can try to, to fill the hunger of the cathedral. So that's that's up to you. Wow. I love that. That sounds great. <laughs> yeah. And uh, as a reminder, uh, later this uh, evening, uh, so at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, uh, there will be a live play where you'll be able to to see this in action um, and, and see, yeah, how the game plays and so forth. Of course, we will be playing... Uh, on a uh, digital copy and it's in prototype form so it will not have all the bells and whistles that the physical copy will have but uh, at least gameplay wise you'll you'll get a, a feel for uh, for what the game um, plays like now one thing that you may notice uh, in this image as well is that what was previously in the top um, portion of the game board where the pieces of the cathedral was was built once the cathedral has been completely built, that board flips to the other side, and now there's a big gaping maw where Ooh. devoured units uh, will go, never to be seen again. So Okay. All right. That sounds great. Is the game pushing back against players, or does that depend on what side they align with? So it depends a little bit on... Um, a lot of it depends on which nightmares you're playing with. So there, there's a variety and, and a selection of nightmares, and they they each um, they each apply to a certain aspect of the game. So if you're playing with some that like there are some nightmares that just want to devour units, um, and that might either be good if you if you're doing something that is related to having your units devoured. In fact, whoever has the most devoured units will score more points than the other players. However, the more of your units that are devoured, the harder it is for you to also control the other areas, right? So there, there's a bit of a, uh, of a balance there of, of basically ben depending on how you play uh, versus the actions that are happening uh, during the game as well. That's it great. also depends so a lot on of, some so of the... So it's area control, right? Yes. Yeah, so so the, it's, it's basically an, an objective-based area control where you're trying to both control some of the areas... Um, it, but they're also neutral units that might control them. Uh, and sometimes right. you, you, when you fight against, whether you're fighting against uh, neutral units or uh, other players, sometimes you actually want to lose and sometimes you want to win. Again, depending mm -hmm. on what you're trying to achieve uh, during the game. That's cool. Um, yeah, I'd be curious. I let, we play mainly with two, so sometimes area control can be challenging. I like when there's uh, elements of the board to deal with instead of just fighting each other, you know? Right. For sure. Yeah, that's great. That definitely will open up the, the player count a lot better because, 
Yeah, air control at two is always very difficult to do. Yeah, so that means that you're, you're ha gonna have a, a minimum of of basically three types of units, right? On the or or units belong to three opponents or or whatever. So. That's awesome. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's really neat, um, and and there are lots of uh, lots of cool actions, and and it's it's a fairly uh, fairly straightforward and, and simple gameplay, and especially because you get to do something on every player's turn. Uh, you will either mm -hmm. conform to their action, uh, or you will dissent, and and your own action card. So if if I take the develop action, for example, whatever the let's say that you have upgraded yours. You get to, mm -hmm. to 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 follow my action based on your upgraded card. So it's not just based on what I've done. So That's that gives cool. you a little bit more control over what to do. And sometimes you can set yourself up for, for things for your next turn. Sometimes you can even accomplish things off turn um, that allow you to maneuver around and that are, uh, basically give mm. you not quite as much as you'd be able to do on a full turn of your, of your own, but enough where it feels like you had... A, a small turn on on another player's turn so or you're setting yourself up for your turn correct yeah yep. yeah i love that so um yes and so so people are asking by the way um about um so someone's asking earlier uh, about uh, the choice between game found and and kickstarter and such um it, it's it's p part of it is the fact that we we want to make sure that um, we choose the platform that is the best for for whichever game it is and sometimes that that alone uh, matters a little bit because there are different types S some people back games on both platforms and some people prefer a Kickstarter for certain types of games and game found for others so there's no I in the end it's not going to affect the game that you're getting. Um, it's just a matter of uh, practical reasons for, for us. And, and we will be sharing more information about this and the availability and such um, here very soon. Basically, this, this is the kickoff for uh, more things that you'll hear uh, until the launch of the GameFound um, campaign on March 28th. All right, let's see what we have next. So let's talk about uh, after March. Of course, we have April, and in April we have a couple of no. uh, releases. We have uh, a an expansion for Mandala Stones. This one is called Harmony, um, and even though it's a small, it's both a small box physically speaking, but it's also it seems like well, it's only adding twelve uh, stones to the game basically. But these stones they go uh, directly on. Uh, on the board where you're basically playing your your where you're placing your stones as you're scoring uh, and instead of just getting the plus one or two uh, victory points you can now get one of these stones and you can uh, basically use that to enhance uh, the stones that you have on your player board which will allow you to to get bigger uh, turns and scoring for for future rounds as well cool yeah I, I, that sounds great and then we have uh, Founders of Teotihuacan is also coming out uh, early April. Um, and this is, of course, it's, it's a standalone game, um, even though thematically it's related to Teotihuacan City of Gods. Uh, from a mechanism point of view, this is uh, not at all uh, related. It's very different. Uh, you'll recognize some of the artwork. You'll recognize some of the, the concepts, for example, uh, the building of, of pyramids and so forth, that was a very prominent feature of the city of Teotihuacan. So it makes sense that both Teotihuacan City of Gods as well as founders of Teotihuacan, uh, where there's some form of uh, temple building and pyramid building. Um, this basically, uh, history-wise, this takes uh, place prior to the events of Teotihuacan City of Gods. Basically, Teotihuacan City of Gods is... Uh, once the city has been established and founders of Teotihuacan, as the name implies as well, is basically the, the building and construction of the early uh, early city. I believe um, it's more accessible too, right? A little lighter? Yes. Yes, it is. I mean, it's, it's still not... It's still not a there's, light yeah. There's game. definitely some puzzle, yeah. um, but it's it is more more accessible. It has a shorter play time 
um, as well. So, but it's, there's a nice, um, nice balance between certain types of buildings they add to your player board. You want them to be spaced apart because that will enhance the number of uh, resources that you can place around them. But other buildings, you want to put them close together because that will maximize the points that you're scoring. So you're trying to balance those things as the as the game is going on. Um, yeah. And, of course, there is a reminder about the live play, which will be uh, tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Uh, Mountain uh, Time, and you'll be able to see the Brothers Murph take on founders of Teotihuacan. Yay. The yeah, other thing... game is great. I Sorry. played it last. I, we played the game last night, and it was it was so fun and puzzly, right up my alley. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah it's 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 really nice. I like. Um, I really enjoy this this game. It it adds a nice, um, a, a nice puzzle in a short uh, playtime, right? Because it oh, is yeah, shorter than. Sure. Uh, I mean, this this one you can easily play in an hour, even with uh, with four people. So that's great. Yeah. All right. I could totally um, see it. Then we have um, another thing that is coming out in April, which is uh, a loot box. Uh, and as the name here implies, this is treasure goodness. Um, you can see the artwork of a lot of different uh, games of ours on the cover, which means that this uh, loot box is basically going to contain a lot of uh, little modular expansions or... Uh, challenges for expert players and, and so forth for several of the games. So there will be a book of challenges or basically expert setups that mm. turn the game on its head a little bit for uh, Teotihuacan City of Gods. Uh, for example, there's one setup where the pyramid starts the game built already. Or there will oh. be some that are challenging where the boards are placed in, the, in such a way that it creates different challenges. Or where there are special victory conditions. You can't win the game unless you've reached the top of a certain That's number cool. of temples and, and so forth. So again, it's just taking a game that um, you don't need any additional components, but it's just uh, different scenarios basically that you can that you can use uh, for the game. And it's also uh, similar things for uh, Tekeno and Tawantin Suyu where there are uh, setups that you um, that just provide different challenges uh, for you in the game. I'm here for that. That's great. Yeah, I love I love objectives personally, you know, sandbox yeah. games aren't usually my thing. So when there's something to go for, give me for some sure. kind of, you know, yeah, I need direction. some motive. I need the yeah, direction. I need to like know what I'm going to do. I don't want like, what are you going to do? And then when you said that the pyramid was already built in the Tennessee book and I was like, what? Like that's how most of my games end. <laughs> yeah. Right. Now you have to do other things. Yeah. And, that's and so in fact, cool. in that particular setup, there are two boards that allow you to build the noble houses. And you can actually cycle and loop that Avenue of the Dead track. Oh, that's so. interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, so there are definitely that's things that, that change things up. up. Again, there are no no real new rules, right? It's just a matter of, okay, well, here's a, here's a, a, a way that the game works differently. This is the setup they use for it and, and so forth. Um, there are also a couple of... Um, little mini modules there is a, a set of quick start cards for zapotec uh there is oh. a, a module called the voice for origins first builders as well as a 13th zodiac card there are Ooh. some uh, fancy draw bags for you to use for both tawantin suyu and tekeno a little mini uh, modular expansion for tekeno that adds uh, a tile that you can place uh, under one of the houses that you build and it will basically double the effect of that uh, of that house Ooh, once per game and, okay. and so forth. So lots of just little uh, fun things. Um, so we're looking forward to that as well. Yeah, that's great. Now, uh, if you have looked on, uh, if you follow us on social media, you may have seen that we did uh, recently a little poll on um, where we were talking about basically the cover for uh, Terracotta Army. We provided... Uh, two different uh, versions of it. So the one that you see on the left is the one that was um, a, a... Obviously, they have different styles, right? The one on the right is more... Uh, has a more realistic uh, look to it and, and so forth. And we asked people what they would uh, prefer. Now, one thing that is 
nice about both of these covers. They have both been uh, reviewed and approved by our cultural consultants, so that that was already uh, approved. Whichever one we would we would go with, we'd already run it uh, by them. And based on the results of uh, of the poll, the cover. Which which one do you think is is the one? By the way, Theo and Thomas. Sorry. Right. Yeah, I guarantee it's one on the right, but yeah, I'm gonna I ran go it too in my group. I shared your post and and asked, and it was pretty, yeah, pretty clear I mean, and the obvious. But I like I like the left because it shows the vastness of the army, but it's so striking on the right, like such a striking cover. Yep. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. The one on the on the right is the one that um, that people preferred, and that's also going to be the one that is uh, is the final cover for uh, for the game as well. Um, one thing that is really neat about Terracotta Army is um, basically the action selection. You have this action wheel um, where er anywhere where you're placing a worker, there will be uh, three different actions that you're taking. You're taking them from the innermost action around this action wheel to the outside. Now, the two inner rings, so basically the innermost one as well as the middle one, they, they rotate as the game goes on. Mm. Um, so so you'll have different action combinations. Um, and in fact, you can also uh, pay money to rotate them um, an additional uh, time and, and so forth. So, but that, that means that not only from, from setup, but also as the game goes on, uh, the actions will continue to change and you have to plan accordingly because with it being a worker placement game, uh, once someone places uh, one of their uh, their craftsmen on that space, well, now you can't take that action. But maybe you go on an adjacent spot and you pay money to be able to rotate one of those rings to at least get one of the actions that you that you wanted. Okay, that sounds great. This game is also going to have some really beautiful looking uh, miniatures uh, that uh, that you're building. Uh, of course, this represents the mausoleum where you're building the uh, the actual terracotta army. Uh, different types of uh, warriors that you're placing in there um, and so forth as the game goes goes on so it, it builds up and, and it looks really nice as the as you're playing the game because you're continuing to to basically add uh, warriors to that uh, to that area nice and this will also be uh, live played uh, on Sunday so tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Uh, you'll be able to to see this um, of course this is still a uh, in digital form, so a lot of the things that you're going to see uh, here are very close to um, what you would, what the final um, version is going to be. Um, so in this case, you're you're going to see some of the uh, the miniatures and and so forth in uh, in that uh, playthrough. Awesome! Yeah, that's great. Very cool. And yeah. that's basically what we have. Um, planned for for this that's a packed weekend y'all that's a packed right? weekend yeah you guys are kicking some butt yeah that's what we like to do i like, um, literally right? need everything <laughs> <laughs> and and again i just want to encourage everyone to uh go and join uh the discord channel um because you there, there will be basically uh there are three game demos um, every day um, for for uh, different games, but you'll also be able to um, it, 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 don't don't be afraid that you're gonna miss some of the content here because you'll be able to watch things after the fact anyway. So uh, you can you can join some of those game demos if you want, and you can also uh, spectate. Uh, so if you don't have the time or you don't want to necessarily play on your own, at least you'll be able to to get an explanation and get a feel for uh, for the different games. Um, as well but yeah that is what we have uh what we have planned and it's 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 funny i i, I knew this was going to happen because i didn't mention anything about it people are asking in the in the chat they're saying oh hey are there any news on tiletum hey is there a, a an update for us uh how about the game is still coming and you'll hear more about it in the future that's what i can tell you I like that breadcrumb. I'm here for that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I gave them some things to work on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I got to test <laughs> it a notes. little bit. Just a couple yeah. of notes. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. It's good. Just little things. Nice. 
Love it. Hey, can I ask Rainier just an ignorant question yeah. in case somebody might wonder the same thing? So with the demos, because there's a couple that I want to see but maybe can't play, are you they're on TTS, right? So and then you're using Discord for the audio or are they yeah, streamed? So, so, through, so they're all Discord? on they're all on, on Tabletopia, uh, is where, where they are. Okay, Tabletopia. Uh, but yes, then we're using Discord for audio. So uh, Perfect. Okay. all you need is a browser, you don't need um, anything else you can just and, and you, you can even spectate uh, which is the other thing that is nice you don't need to have any additional thing you can just join in the in your browser to uh, to be able to to the see it you find the game there yep okay. yeah so but yes then then we're using um discord for audio for uh, for that perfect just wanted to separate that distinction because i was confused at first too right so. Make sure everybody goes to the right place. So if yeah, if you don't want to partake and you just want to watch it, just jump on Tabletopia. Um, is there going to be links to find those in case they aren't in the Discord, or do they just look up the game? So, so the, none of these are uh, are publicly available. So there are basically okay. there are links that we have uh, from our basically publisher prof profile. So you can get those links from. Uh, so if you want to spectate a game, you can get that link from Discord. So so okay. join Discord and go to that. We have a, a, a category there for B and D Con 2022. So yep. you can just go there and, um, and and people people are there as well and ready to help uh, you find your way. So so don't get don't worry that uh, you're gonna be left on your own. If if you go to our Discord, uh, people are there and happy to to help direct you and and so forth so that you can. Yeah, get whatever information you need and, and so forth. Um, Say hi to Ola, awesome. she's there. That's right. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I just want to mention real quick as well is that we have a lot of um, special sales going on uh, during this weekend. Uh, we both have pre-orders available for some of the games and expansions that we were talking about. So check that out on boardanddice.com. And also if you are... Uh, following us on social media and so forth, you um, can look at some of those posts and details there as well. We have several games that we um, are doing special sales and discounts for uh, during this uh, convention, but also we're having some pre-order specials and so forth as well. In fact, for Founders of Teotihuacan, uh, if you pre-order the game, then you'll also be getting an additional uh, set of um, some of those action tiles that go basically every turn. Uh, there will be a new set of, of action tiles, so then now there's a little bit more uh, variety and some new ones that don't come in the game otherwise, and you'd get those uh, with your pre-order as well. Nice. Very cool. So, so yeah. That is, um, yeah, that's that's exciting. I'm excited about this. Um, I'm excited. That's a, It's great. All, all, every game sounds like a perfect addition to the catalog it's just so so good and yeah i i'm i'm 100 here for it <laughs> yeah i love that you guys work within like a certain mold but you're pushing the boundaries too you know i like the nightmare cathedral seems like a nice nice um expansion to that if you will right the same with phillips game and dollar stones I, I was surprised by that that's very clever oh yeah yeah and uh, we yeah. try to we try to find um, games that both, like you said, they, they both fit our portfolio. They fit with the other games and deliver something clever or something that is that makes it feel like they fit. But then at the same time, they're also very different. Um, like you, you, you look at... Um, Look at look at games like uh, Origins First Builders, and then you compare that with Terracotta Army, um, which Origins was designed um, by Adam Kwapinski, and he's a co-designer on Terracotta Army, and they're both very very Love. different. Um, yeah, and and then you're comparing Terracotta Army with its miniatures, and then you have miniatures that do something completely different in Nightmare Cathedral, right? So. Um, yeah. yeah, it's it's cool. I I'm I'm excited about that part too. I'm I like the fact that um, the games they deliver, um, and in, in fact, it's one of the things that that people were saying when Origins came out. They're like, well, this this feels like it belongs in the 
the T series of games, right? Even though it's different designer and and so forth, but yeah, that's. But I think that's important. I really too, like right? Tris Magistus, and I'm not seeing it on your page. I'm afraid to ask. Did you guys not renew that one? So uh, it, it's sorry it's, to blindside you. No, no, no. You're you're fine. And in fact, I <laughs> that's, that's one that questions. I I get questions from time to time about that one. It's um, it didn't do tremendously well when it first came out, um, but it's a game that has very uh, very loyal fans. Uh, it's a game it's that brilliant. people. brilliant. I don't know. People still talk <laughs> I love about it. it. I, it was and, weird to learn, though. Yeah, and, and it's 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 definitely a game that we uh, right now there are no there are no plans for any additional content, and there are no plans for a reprint. Uh, but people better go knows? buy it while they can. Yep. Just saying. Yeah. Uh, so. And that, and that happens, right? I mean, that that's right. We, we would love for every game to be one that um, that becomes a new bestseller, right? But that's the the reality is, and we, we know it's it's not every game is going to be for everyone, and we we try to do what we can to support the game and give it um, the best chance that it has to to do well, because we want every game to like we would love to keep all of the games um in print forever but of that's, course yeah that's not gonna not gonna happen so right yeah um i will say that i am like 100 percent here for the uh terracotta where you can spin the two wheels like when you were saying that i was like oh i love the the breadth of options that you can do on your turn because yep. that's that's going to be uh, some very satisfying turns there's also going to be some great dissatisfaction because the innermost sure. wheel <laughs> rotates in one direction, the middle one in a different direction. Ooh, and the player yeah. right before you may have rotated one and there's no place where you can go that is not Ooh. already taken where you can rotate to the spot that you really, really wanted. So that that's sounds, awesome. <laughs> that sounds, wow, sounds great. Yeah, real great. So, um, all I'm saying in the chat that there will be a demo of uh, Founders of Teotihuacan that will start in about half an hour. So if you're interested in giving that a try, uh, definitely go to our Discord channel and you'll be able to uh, to join that um, as well. Okay. So. The Kino is 50% off too on your store. That's a good deal. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's the thing that we, we like to do Um. I I I'm I'm not gonna name names, but I I feel like I feel like we 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 feel different because we like we like discounting games that are doing well for us. Like Tekeno is a game that is it has done really well, and it's getting. I mean, it got an expansion, right? It's it's one that is still still selling and getting reprinted and everything. But we still want mm -hmm. to give people a good deal um, on it. We did for. Um, for the holidays, uh, we had we had bundles where you could get everything for Teotihuacan. For example, you could get both the base game and the expansions and different uh, promos and such, and you you got it for a really good deal. So we're we're trying to make sure that um, I mean this this is not a it's not a cheap hobby to be uh, to be involved in. Mm -hmm. We're all gamers. No, so we know. yeah, definitely not cheap. No. Nope. Um, <laughs> So that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Love, so love, what, love. what are some exciting things that are coming up for you guys uh, with things that you're, that you're doing anything oh. fun on the horizon? There's so much this month is crazy. Next month's even crazier for crowdfunding. I don't know if people have their wallets. Yeah, strapped on or not, there's a lot of stuff coming out. Yeah. 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 Uh, mostly I'm going to be focusing on a lot of how to plays. I've been really, really enjoying doing that. And I really want to put my own little spin on it. So I'll have a couple of how to plays that are coming out from a couple of different publishers that I really enjoy. So that's mostly what's on the horizon for geeky gamer guy. Yeah. I would like to get back to playing games. I haven't played. I'm so behind <laughs> just oh. working on new stuff, some testing and, and mm. marketing and, Managing totally the community. Yeah, yeah, it's been 
hard to get games to the table. I don't know how some of the content creators do it, you know, playing. You have to set aside the time. Like, I'm telling you, that's the, right? yeah. Like, it's all about scheduling for me. I have to make sure that I set aside time for it. People are always like, you know, how do you get new games? It's like my budget is mostly to that. And if it's not that, there's some sort of other way that works with it. So yeah, I'm still all... playing games from 2018, you know? <laughs> there's yeah. so many good That's games. Great, That's great, though. That's good. I think that, like, we don't have to be always doing new. We can do... You know, 2018 can still be new to you. Like that's okay. It, it's not that old if you think right, about it. Right, it's, it's not. Like, it's say not. older games. You know, we'll I, know say, like, I know. Um, I know. Terraforming Mars. Like <laughs> it's like not that old. But then time flies, and all of a sudden it's 10 years, and and something has already got an anniversary. It's you the know? truth, yeah. though. Like when we were, when I was doing the podcast Variable Player Power, we would be talking on the on the podcast, and it's like, oh, that game is from 2014. Oh, that's so old, and it's like. That was only four years ago. Like, uh, that makes no sense. By the way, I just want to yeah, the... to uh, thank uh, Starbuck for uh, for subscribing. Thank you so much uh, for doing that. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying. Uh, it, it's kind of like, I mean, you look at... Um, some of the some of the games that we've done the deluxe master sets for as well, right? Because we've done three of those now, they're not, they're not that old, mm -hmm. but so many mm -hmm. games have come out since then, right? And and oh, in fact, there sure. have been so many advances in both publishing and um, just things that are available and and such in general. There are, there are so many, so many things that have happened in a in a short time span that. The it's true. It, it feels like I mean, there are, there are certainly some games that are older that I play and and really enjoy them, but at the same time, not everything ages well in that in that time span, right? So even something that it's came out um, just a few years ago, there there are things that that have happened since then, either mechanisms or or production uh, capabilities and and such. Right. Yeah. 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 Definitely. The, there is i love i think my favorite thing about new games is just the innovation of doing something that i didn't see coming and then it works flawlessly i always love i always love games that, that do that right or build off I of some snow down is 10 years old i know right wow that's when it came out yeah Tony yeah, it's it basically ancient <laughs> that's 10 years it's a long I time know. it's funny yeah, I, I, yeah i don't think i mean i i remember just playing it and it's and it was maybe four years ago that I yeah. finally you know I, I I fell in love with that one and Tony's a great designer and there's so much content for it and then you guys re-released it with all the content and it's like <laughs> it'll probably be 2032 before I get to it all. Oh yeah, for <laughs> sure. But that was the nice thing this with that be a one good too. One for me. Uh, being able to to just um, b being able to to basically take something that that came out. People played it and loved it. It was supported with expansions and it was supported with promos. I mean, he would he would have e either blank cards or he would write something on a napkin or whatever and just hand out promos at conventions. And it's nice to be able to bring all of that together in in one place, right? Um, That's so cool. So, because yeah. let's let's face it, a lot of us are completionists, whether we want to admit it or not, and especially if it's a game that you really. That you really enjoy. Um, it is fun to have the variety because not every, not every bit of every expansion or every scenario is going to be right up your alley, but this way you know that you you have it and you can play it and you you know that the ones that would be for you that you have those and you have access to those. So. Yeah, getting to tailor the experience to the gamer, I think, is a beautiful thing you know it, it depends on what seem somebody likes just like how you did with Legranha. like Legranha, like they got like you know all the different modules that adds to it i just i love that you give a breadth of choices so if you want to go more area control in the market you can add that module to go do that stuff or you can make deliveries a lot easier by doing another part of the modules so it just uh just opens up more replayability but also if somebody really enjoys one aspect of the game you just leaned into that and they get to enjoy it more right plus bringing it to a wider audience i mean <clears throat> yido has been a, a water deep killer in my mind for a long time ever since oh, yeah. i discovered it 
I've had I had the original version, so I was glad to see you guys, you know, put that out and it helps people who've never seen the game go, Wow, what is this? And it's I think that's an older game too, right? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to look at the date. I yeah. think that was twenty twelve. Yido's ten years now. Yeah. Seems yeah. like twenty twelve was a good year. I remember a lot of it doesn't seem like things have gone as fast as they have, but board games have evolved really fast. I found yeah, a chart oh, sure. a few years ago where it showed like two thousand nine to to 2020 with the amount of games that come out each year and it was mm. astronomical the amount that we're we're having as the hobby yeah, which is great right everything goes up. expansion yeah when, and also one thing that uh that didn't used to be common and which was one of the main reasons for uh bringing yido back into into print and, and to expand it with modular content was specifically that right for for players to be able to customize the experience and being able to have asymmetry in in setup and that that can add so much to not just the game that you're playing right then but your willingness to to bring it back to the table you've played it you liked it but if if you know that okay well the next time it's going to be the same experience well that's that's less fun than if you can customize it and say well next time we're going to play with other modules you don't have to learn new rules (laughs) you're just changing Mm -hmm. some of the some of the variability and some of the options and that's that's been something that used to be reserved for expansions right and now it's become mm-hmm. more common to have that in base games where it's it's some randomness during setup um and then as you're playing the game different aspects are enhanced or or so yeah, yeah me personally i won't keep a game if it's not something that's variable I just don't have the, uh, we'll get, it's more personal. We'll get stuck in a rut. It's like, oh, I did this last time and I won, so I'm going to do it again. And that, to me, that's not fun. I'm not overly competitive. So playing games, I like to explore and experience and, and learn about the game. And, and I, I just, I feel if it's not something I can, like, I love asymmetry. I love goals. You know, I love all those elements. And, and even if I know the game, I still like learning the game, if that makes any sense. Like each time right. it's like, oh, I didn't think of trying that or give me reasons to do something different. I mean, I know so- everybody's different. Some people love chess, right? Or they love a game that's just perfect information where they, they can figure it all out and, and math it. I think that's what's great about this hobby is there's enough for everybody. Mm-hmm. And it's Absolutely. okay. Absolutely. <clears throat> like I don't have to like chess. You know, you can. Um, chess had secret objectives. I would love it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that sounds like a great. Yeah, that sounds like great. Chess, right. right? So you, everybody's you different. The, you know? Some people are planners. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Have you played with that. the nightmare chess cards? Am so, I for, what? So 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 there are there's a set of cards that you can play really? with uh, with chess. They're called nightmare chess, Google? and <laughs> they change they change things. Uh, some cards. Oh, that was my Steve Jackson. I remember seeing that. Drastically, where. There, there, there are cards in there that if you're planning and playing it right, it can rotate the board 90 degrees. So now Ooh, you're playing it like sideways direction. Right? I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, Steve Jackson Games put that out. Yep. 158 cards. That's wow. cool. Wow, yeah. That's there we go. Variety, variety in play. And also, like you said, I love to explore different strategies. I'm really one to, to try to shy away from optimal but if you know obviously if it's there and you go oh i can play it then yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna do what i mean i play to I win, win but i don't yeah care if i win you know what i mean right right it's right, like right yeah no i completely agree completely agree yeah but so it's and, and the point was modules i love it yeah, yeah. right yeah exactly tldr modules love <laughs> modules are great <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> well and and that's also in fact why the why i think the the a lot of people are really excited about the loot box, right? Because it's going to take oh, you, you, you don't you don't have to that, buy another yeah. expansion. You don't have to learn new rules. You don't have to get new components or anything. You 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 take games that you already know how to play, and then there's a either like in Fort Tekeno, for example. There's a new way to set up the game, so you start differently, uh, either with some asymmetry or with some more. Um, synergy between things and you know that you're going to be off to a great start or in Teotihuacan where it's you can choose well do you want the difficult challenge the, this is these are things that could randomly come up right where the boards are just in the most difficult position uh, everything is awkward and difficult but now the it saves you the trouble of 
having to basically it just says well look do this setup this is the setup if you want that or here's the setup that focuses on decorations over temple building or, or whatever so right right yeah a lot of that you'll see in solo games so it's cool to see that adapted for multiplayer yeah little challenges i like that I, I have not seen anybody do that yet but that's why I like solo gaming is really growing on its mm -hmm. own the past five years yeah totally mm -hmm. I and and that. that's been a, a good lifesaver during the pandemic as well, right? It's it's allowed people yep. to enjoy gaming, uh, even if you can't get together with other people. And that's mm -hmm. and same thing. I mean, digital platforms. A few years ago, I looked at those and I said, eh, I don't think I will. I, I don't see the the appeal, right? Because I could just go play that game with my local game group. Well, now mm -hmm. that we've had a pandemic going on then you you can't and then it's yeah, been... definitely more difficult yeah so yeah yeah i i have a friend that that lives in uh, arizona and that's board game arena has been pretty much our lifeline that mm -hmm. we talk on we talk on facetime and we play we play games together and that's that's usually that's how the key though people for i've had people complain about that in bgr you know like oh it's just not the same and and i felt that at first right it's like if you just do the the async, what do they call it, where it's just, you know, you take turns right. back and forth. Right. It's not the same. You may as well play, you know, a phone app. But if, like right. you said, they'll jump on a call with somebody, do, mm -hmm. do FaceTime, and then play the game. We'll do that with the mods, you know. We were trying to yeah. do that regularly um, just to to stay bonded. But you can talk to each other, and, and it's it's great. I mean, yeah. TTS and yeah. Tabletopia, if somebody knows a game, they teach you, and it's a little clumsy sometimes moving the camera and pieces around, but once you of get course. past that barrier, I think it, it's a great um, alternative, mm -hmm. especially yeah. if you're wait. I like it for trying new games. It's like, oh, wow, I absolutely you know, did a demo for this, and now I love it, or you can find out if you don't like it and save yourself the money. Yep. Yeah, I think the thing that we, that I, think, I, I think that we could all agree on is that the table talk is what's really great about board games, right? You're sitting around the, you're sitting around the table and you can be like, oh, you went there, oh, but right. if you're like in a, com on a computer by yourself, it's really hard for you to have that interaction without video chat, right? So if you're doing it yeah. without, it's kind of like, yeah, it kind of defeats the purpose. Oh, you have like to. I really yeah. enjoy the bonding of mm -hmm. games where you're just getting to sit around and be like, oh, you went there? No. And it's like, you can't do that when it's on digital. But when you're doing FaceTime or any sort of uh, messaging thing, that uh, video messaging, that helps. That helps a lot. For sure. I think it yeah. changes the dynamic greatly. Yeah, and then there's the, sure. you know, the aspect uh, from publishers. I've been doing a lot more testing, and this allows all of us to save money. Uh, you know, you can create oh, yeah. Tabletopia and, and send it out to reviewers beforehand or playtesters. It's just really helping bridge and the a gap. And quick turnarounds, and... like much quicker turnarounds, yeah. So right. To update stuff. So, yeah, that's great. Like, I was so, glad to, to give a chance to tile them, and I would not have seen that if, if you guys hadn't put that on there, you know? Right, right. That's awesome. Um, by the way, I just want to answer two questions in the chat. So Max Vincent is asking... So Max is watching on Facebook uh, and asking why there are not a lot of people chatting there. So we we're streaming simultaneously to both Facebook and on Twitch. Uh, there are a few more people that are chatting directly on Twitch. So if you would like to uh, to join that, you can just go to twitch.tv slash Rainer. That's R-A-I-N-E-R underscore board and dice. Uh, but otherwise, you're welcome to, to watch it there. I, I always try to make sure that I repeat uh, questions and so forth. Uh, monitoring questions from from both uh, chats just so that uh, we can answer those and then uh, there was also a question if i'm letting the brothers murph bring founders of teotihuacan to dice tower west uh i mean yes uh i would let them not that i think that i could stop them i'm not gonna go <laughs> hunt them down uh, or anything but no they're they're i mean it's they have the copy now uh if they would like to to bring it, then they're certainly welcome to do so. In fact, I would encourage them to do so. Just so play, just play board and dice games. Replace so the whole library mean, with board and dice. So. Does this mean that if I was going to Dice Tower West, I could bring founders of TNT Walken as well? Yes. That's the, okay. Cool. Good to know. Noted. 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 Yeah. 
Just awesome. just bring bring all the all the board and dice games. <laughs> the whole library is coming with me. <laughs> That's right. Bring Tris Megestas. Let's get it bought back. Have, have Let's you played, get it by back the way, with print. those I want... um, asymmetrical uh, character powers? For which one? Tris? For Tris Magistus? No, I we only played it twice. The first time okay. hurt my head so bad. It was like I got. <laughs> it was like it's it took a minute. It's fair. a really deep game, and oh, yeah. I usually pride myself that I can tell you know first time on a game, first couple of turns. But that one, I don't know if it was just time of day. It's a heavier game, but we, right. it really clicked the same time yeah, we played it. Yeah, um, it depends on the game for sure. Yeah. No. Well, thank you so much uh, to both of you. We're gonna see more of you uh, later. Uh, and test Sorry your knowledge of components, I suppose. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, here in, in a little bit, we have uh, a segment about uh, the artwork of uh, Zdzisław Bekczynski, so definitely uh, stay tuned for that. We're going to take a brief break. We're going to take a break, in fact, between uh, each of the different uh, segments just so that uh, we can swap guests in and out and so forth. But again, Theon Thomas, Thank you so much for being here. This was wonderful to uh, to chat with you. Wonderful to have you on here. And um, yeah, I hope you have a wonderful thank day. Thank you for and having me. Yeah, thank you so much. I, I'm really excited for what y'all have got cooking up. And yeah, I can't wait to see more. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, keep up the good work. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you for all you guys do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. And yeah, stay tuned in the chat. We will be right back. <laughs> 